welcome back to Auto Experts. I'm your host, Barbara Balfour, and on tonight's show, we're talking about etiquette and how to conduct yourself with finesse in uh, all sorts of areas of your life. Right now, we're going to be talking about networking, especially when you're an introvert, Julie. So if you really sort of break out into a cold sweat of the thought of walking into a room where you know barely anybody, how do you survive? How can you prepare for this kind of situation and how do you make the most out of it? Mm -hmm. You know, networking doesn't even come too easy to us that are extroverts. Everybody sort of like panics at the thought. What am I going to talk about? And here's the deal. It's not about pushing yourself it's not about selling yourself what i like to do and you know i talk about this inside of my book i even have a networking aid to build that elevator pitch but i have uh, all kinds of thoughts on elevator pitches but what you should keep in mind when you go to a networking event is how can i help you how can i help that person if i can't help you Maybe there's somebody in my network. So you want to ask questions to the other person. That's what it's all about. It's trying to find a fit and trying to find out what does that person need? What kind of client is their ideal client? What kind of deal are they looking for? What's their next goal? And then it's up to us to find out, okay, is that something where I can help them? Is that a service that I offer? Is that a product that I sell? If not me, well, maybe somebody else. So that's the goal of networking, is how can I help you? How may I serve you? And if you go in there with that philosophy, it should make you breed because you want to find out about the other person, what do they do? How do, uh, how do you develop the perfect elevator pitch? You know, there is no such thing. There is no such thing, especially based upon what I just said. What you want to find out is what the other person does. And from there, you should know on the tip of your fingers what you do and what are its benefits and how there can be a match. You know, and that's what it's all about. Some people come in and they have this rehearsed over and over again elevator pitch that they do in X amount of seconds flat. And let's say, you know, I come in, hi, I'm Julie Blake Homo. I sell the very best land mower in the land. You know, my uh, lawn mower does your grass in 22 seconds flat. Uh, it's safe, blah, 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 blah. And you know what? Uh, why don't you give me your business card? I'm going to come over and demonstrate my lawn mower. Guess what, Barbara? I live in a condo. <laughs> and I chose to live in a condo because I don't want to mow grass anymore. So you should find out about the other person. The best elevator pitch changes. Mm -hmm. It evolves based on who the other person is that you just met. So basically talk to the person, not at them. Yes, and listen. Yeah. Listen. What do they need? What are they in the market for? Do people still use business cards? Yes, they do. Um, the business card is sort of like a, a coveted connection. Granted, these days, a lot of the times when we first connect, the introduction could be virtual, could be by email. Um, but when you get that business card, that business card basically says, I'm giving you permission to contact me by phone, you can send something, you can drop by, by email. So it's handing out all of your contact, all of your communication channels, then become open. And on the note of a business card, it is considered rude to ask for someone's business card. Really? How come? Because it's like you're saying, like, give me all your business, give me access to all of you. Whereas, if I think there is a match and I think that I can serve you, may I offer you my card? There's a big distinction. Can I have your card? May I offer you my card? By saying, may I offer you my card, then the other person can make the decision whether or not there's a match and they can decide whether or not they want to give you their card. So you, you let them feel like they're in control. Absolutely, That's absolutely. Very wise. That's very wise. Julie, I want to talk about how you can dress for success. Mm -hmm. And uh, with, with the summer just around the corner, dress codes are becoming a little bit relaxed. You've actually sent us a few infographics on four different kinds of okay. uh, dress codes. There's uh, business casual, mm -hmm. uh, black tie. Let's pull some of those up on the screen and uh, and learn a little bit more. So first, first off, we've got business casual. Yes, yeah, so for the business casual, what is 
interesting, Barbara, is that generally speaking, business casual does not include wearing jeans. Really? So it depends on the culture of the organization. Um, and foremost, dressing in business is dressing for, and we should almost have a drum roll here, mm -hmm. dressing for your client. Okay. When your client sees you, does business casual make sense to him or her? And generally speaking, jeans are not included. Generally speaking, there should be a collar. Generally speaking, there should be no bare shoulders. But it all depends. And you know, the most important rule is what does HR say? When you're new to an organization or when the seasons, summer reappears, go back to the HR policy. What is the dress code of our organization, of our company? What do I have to keep in mind? And are those flip-flops appropriate at your place of work? Could be, but most of the time, they're not. How much cleavage is too much? Uh, well, it depends. Whatever you're showing may get noticed. By a rule of thumb, I have a great way of doing this. So ladies, listen up. It's called hand high, hand low. So hand high, I take my hand, Barbara, I put it in that, you know that little hole that's here? Mm -hmm. And I would come down here. And where my pinky ends is usually a good cleavage, but it depends. It comes, you know, our breasts come in all sizes, in all forms, uh, you know, a bra can certainly impact. So that would be appropriate. And as far as a hem length goes, you would take that same hand and let's say this is the knee. Mm -hmm. This is the kneecap. Mm -hmm. If I put my pinky here, where my thumb ends mm -hmm. would be as short as the hemline could be. So hand high, hand low mm -hmm. for cleavage and the length of a skirt or a dress. But it depends on your size, it depends on what you do. Um, and keep in mind when you're sitting down, we all know this ladies, what's gonna happen to our skirt, what's gonna happen to dress, it's oh, gonna yes. go up. So look yourself, look at yourself in the mirror before you leave home. And when you're bending over as well. Yeah. What are the big no-nos for gentlemen? The big no-nos for a gentleman could be wearing those flip-flops. And I'll tell you why I don't like flip-flops at the office. If you're a gentleman and you're a big boss, do you want your employees to see your big toe? Mm, Probably not. Um, what about the sound of flip-flops? You're right. going to be going around the office flip-flop, flip-flop, and that's going to be distracting. What if it's 30, 32 degrees outside and you go for a walk and you come back in? There could be a scent. For some of the men also wearing white socks inside of their shoe, well, the simple reason is it's gonna attract. You're gonna see, do you want people to look at your socks or do you want them to listen to what you're saying? Clothing, attire, basically says what we do in the work world. So whatever you're wearing, you know, if it's gonna distract from your message, think about it. Do you want it to come? And the same thing for accessories. If you're wearing uh, 10 rings, well, I'm probably gonna be fascinated by those rings and I'm gonna ask you, tell me about that one, tell me about that one, instead of listening to what you're saying. Didn't, uh, didn't Coco Chanel say the rule of thumb is to get dressed and then before you leave the house, remove one thing? Remove one before you leave yeah. the house. And you know, there's a general rule of about 12 accessories at the very most. And that includes your glasses, could include um, when you have a highlight that maybe is purple, which could be trendy or something like that. So you want people to listen to what you're saying, not to be observing and coming, oh, that's so great, where did you get that, that's beautiful. In essence, you don't want people to say, wow, what a great outfit. You want them to say, wow, he makes sense. Yes. Wow, that's really a great leader. That's what you want. Mm -hmm. We've got a few minutes left before the end of our show tonight. I wanted to go into business travel because that's a big part of our lives more and more and how we conduct ourselves on the airplane. There's a great website called PassengerShaming.com yes. where you can see some photos of some of the atrocious behavior that people do on the plane, putting their feet up on the chair, clipping their nails, flipping their hair or their coat on the seat behind them. Uh, riding or being on a plane is often such a miserable existence. Yes. We're all cramped, we're all fighting for space, so how can we 
do so, still occupy our space without being completely barbaric to our, towards our neighbors. Yes. Well, let's make that even wider, Barbara. Let's include in there public transportation. When we go on the bus, when we go on the train, everywhere, we should be cognizant of the sights, what are people going to see, the sounds, so that could apply to our smartphones, so sights, sounds, the smell. What if we choose to bring in a snack, right? What are people going to smell? Body odor could be one. Sights, smells, the sounds, and safety. We want to make sure that whatever we do, whether it's on the airplane, the train, the bus, is going to be safe. So when it's raining and I have my umbrella, I should make sure that it's between my legs. When I'm walking aboard that airplane and I have a backpack or my children have a backpack, I probably want to make sure that it's in front because in the back I can't see where it goes. Same thing on the bus. If you sometimes turn and your backpack is there and you have lots of stuff, you have books, you're an outstanding student, but then all of a sudden you turn around and there's someone that may be a little bit shorter, oh, you could have bumped somebody out of the way. So be cognizant of sight, sounds, smells, and at all times, safety. So that goes for anything having to do with public transportation. And when is it polite to make conversation with the person next to you or to say hello? I noticed in Europe, if you're uh, on a train or a plane, the person sitting next to you always says hello, but you rarely see that in North America. Well, I don't know about you, but I always do it. Um, first of all, if anything's going to happen, I sort of want to have that connection. I guess that's for my safety. So I'll come in on the plane or on the train where I know that I'm going to be traveling for a while, except for on the bus, and I'm going to put up my hand. I'm going to introduce myself, maybe just by first name. Maybe I don't want to say my first first and last name, whereas in a networking event, definitely first and last name all the time and what you do. So I'm going to, hi, my name is Julie, and then I'm going to see, I'm going to sort of feel out the person. Sometimes um, someone may like to chat because they're nervous. Sometimes you may like to chat because you're bored or what have you. So just limit the boundaries. Um, sometimes it could be appropriate, sometimes not. Observe the nonverbal clues from the other person, whether or not they're in that chatty mood. If you don't feel like talking is the best way to deal with the situation to just carry a pair of headphones with you and put them in? Love it. That's a great tip. You could definitely do that or go inside of your book or if sometimes somebody could insist and you could say, you know, um, I really don't get a lot of me time so I brought this great book with me so I'm just gonna, you know, relax and get into my book. That's all. That's lovely, Julie. You've, uh, you've given us so much, uh, wealth, a wealth of information, very, very useful tips, and our viewers are lucky to have had you tonight. We're almost at the end of our show. Where can people find you? They can find me on my website, etiquettejulie.com. If they have questions, julie at etiquettejulie.com. Let's see, there's Facebook, there's Instagram, there's LinkedIn, and there's Twitter. So. Uh, any way that they want to communicate with me, I'm open and any sticky situation, I'll be glad to answer. Do you have any upcoming events? I have a few events that are private okay. events. I'm going to have some public events coming up for children, for modern manners, and also one-on-one -on -one coaching for anybody that wants to take their career to the next level. Thank you so much, Julie. Don't forget to come back next week to watch my colleague in the studio, Moni Dojeje. Thanks you so much for joining us tonight. Have a wonderful night.